Englishman, Lieutenant General Birdwood was in charge of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps from December 1914. A non-drinker, he lived a Spartan existence and was prepared to spend lives ruthlessly. Not a gifted strategist or organizer, he understood the difference between English, New Zealand and Australian troops. Sir John Monash, commander of the 4th Australian Brigade, said, Birdwood is a small thin man. He has nothing striking or saltily about him. He speaks with a stammer and has a rather nervy unquiet manner. However, there is no mistaking his perfect grasp of the whole business of soldiering. I have been around him for hours and heard him talking to privates, buglers, gunners, colonels, signalers, and generals and every time he has left them with a better knowledge of his business than they had before. He appeals to me most thoroughly. Birdwood was not as full of praise as Mon Nush. He said of Mon Nush, An exceptionally able man on paper but not a good horseman. Birdwood was much admired by the Australian and New Zealand troops because he swam in Anza Cove despite constant shell fire. His photo swimming nude in an Australian paper caused a torrent of swimsuits to be posted to him. After Gallipoli he was in charge of the British 5th Army. Birdwood decided that the landing would be made in the dark without a preliminary barrage from his escorting battle cruisers. This decision left a narrow time window for a landing. The moon sets about 3 a.m., dawn is at 4 a.m. with the sun rising at 5 a.m. He decided the first Anzacs would land at 4.30 a.m. This meant that the next waves of soldiers would be landing in the early morning light. The landing place for all Anzacs was to be the north end of Brighton Beach. This beach is a five-foot bank and the plane runs back from there. A perfect spot to get horses and stores ashore. The left flank would be near a fortified ridge called Auri Burnup, the right about a mile north of Gabati Hill. This small hill is fortified and known to have modern guns. After landing on Brighton Beach, the covering force of 4,000 men would push forward aiming to reach Third Ridge. The left flank of the covering force would occupy Battleship Hill while the right flank occupied Gabati and destroyed the guns. There are reported to be guns on 400 Plateau. These are to be captured before moving on. The covering force then will occupy the Third Ridge and Scrubby Knoll. The Third Ridge is the key to the entire battlefield. The Anzac commander, Birdwood knew it when he planned the attack. The Turkish commander, Von Sanders knew it when he planned the defense. The commander of the Turkish division, Mustafa Kemal took his whole division to the third ridge when he arrived. Number two an Australian brigade lands immediately after the covering force. They will secure the left flank by extending the line to Fisherman's Hut and north to Hill 971. Next to land will be the reserve brigade. They will leapfrog through the existing forces and capture Mautip, about 10 kilometers away. Here the Anzacs would hold the Turkish reserves in the area and cut off the retreat of Turkish troops from Gate Hells.